Now, while U.S. President Donald Trump was in Paris for Bastille Day, his son Donald Trump Jr. was again justifying his meeting with a Russian lawyer during last year's presidential campaign. Donald Trump Jr. did not reveal the presence of a former Russian intelligence officer in previous disclosures about the meeting. Well, the meeting is being scrutinised amid investigations into Russian election meddling. Former White House staffer and US political commentator Professor Ed Blakely is here to share his insights. Good morning to you. Good morning. Professor, wonderful to have you joining us. And um, it's been yet another extraordinary week of revelations, has Unbelievable. It not? Unbelievable. Hang on. We say this every week. Yes, hey, we say this every week. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And it was the worst week two weeks ago. <laughs> and last week, the worst week. But this is Bastille how Day is special is. because mm. heads get chopped off. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. This is ridiculous. How do you forget that you have more people in the room and you forget you had an interpreter in the room? So it's up to six. Some people say eight. This is not forgetfulness. This is deliberate. Mm. And the deliberation here makes me very suspicious as to what's going on. Not on the Russian side. I think they're pretty clear. They want to get as many people implicated in this as possible because then they can control them. But on the Trump side, this is either dumb or it's leading to very bad outcomes. Are you saying that potentially some of the, uh, those officials within the Trump administration are having their strings pulled by the Russians? Well, I'm saying this is the Russians' long game. I started out in the U.S. State Department. The long game of the Russians is to turn people to their cause. It didn't matter whether Trump won the election or not. How many people could they turn in the direction they wanted them in and then use those people to gain what they wanted? The Majinsky issue, uh, Syria, etc. Remember, they did this with Flynn already in Turkey. They know how to work people. And victory is not an all-out win. It is gaining people and control over people and their actions. Now, as we've noted uh, at the beginning of our chat, uh, it's been consecutive weeks of, of things um, being awry, uh, questions being raised. But does this latest um, issue around Donald Trump Jr. actually change anything? Uh, is there anything here that we might expect to be a negative or even a positive outcome? Well, it can't be positive. It's got to be negative, but it's going to be negative in ways that you may not anticipate. This investigation, I think, is going to turn in a different direction. It's going to turn on not the campaign, but the Trumps and their relationships with Russians. And where these relationships endangered national security, that's where this investigation is going now. Yes, yeah, so how are they likely to be brought to account then? We have a, a number of uh, parallel investigations running. Uh, which one's the most important in, in your book? The Senate investigation. Because in the Senate investigation, they're looking at how Russia is intervening in the United States, not just the election. So they're going well beyond the election. This may bring people in the Democratic Party. We don't know. But the Russians' long game is to gain allies inside the United States who do the things they want. So this woman did not get there by accident. Uh, now, Donald Trump Jr. doesn't know how to use the internet. She's on Google. So if he says, I don't really know who she was, now, come on, my granddaughter could look her up on Google. So there are issues here that make it appear to me that the Russians are really trying to play the United States against itself. There, there are a couple of prominent Republicans who are speaking out. We've certainly got uh, uh, Senator John McCain. Uh, and Lindsey Graham. Lindsey Graham. Are you surprised others aren't speaking publicly or perhaps at least privately? They have very deep concerns about how this is transpiring. They are speaking privately. My sources tell me that they are very alarmed, they're very frightened about what this could do to the party and what it can do to them. So things that are, should be on the front burner, like health care, are really on the back burner. This is getting deeper and deeper. It happened in Watergate, too. Uh, in Watergate, they thought they were just doing a burglary, and it went on and on and on and got all the president's men. We have a situation here 
where the president today said this was a hoax about his own son. There are collaborators there. People have to sign into Trump Tower. That man didn't get in Trump Tower by accident. He signed in. This is very alarming. So we've also uh, seen in the past week um, uh, steps being taken uh, with uh, the Democrat uh, Brad Sherman uh, filing an impeachment order. Uh, whether or not that will then be taken up, it's a very difficult parliament uh, there in the United States. But, but steps are already being taken down that path. How far might we get? Well, I think the Democrats don't want to go down that path right now. Uh, they're getting what they want, confusion, disarray, inability to run the government. All these things help the Democrats in coming back. The Democrats has another ally, and that is the Federal Civil Service, who are stopping carrying out orders, who are diverting orders, who are not honoring the ban, etc. So the president is now weak, so he cannot command his own government. This is a very difficult problem. Yeah, this goes to the heart of what you're saying, is that the business of government has stalled. It's not just all, it's been perverted, and perverted in very undemocratic <clears throat> ways where people are not carrying out orders because they don't believe they're right. You have to, really, when you give that sign, put your hand up and say, I'm going to do what the government says I'm supposed to do. You need to do it. You cannot let that go on. Something has to change very quickly. This is what John McCain knows. This is what Lindsey Graham knows. And this is what the Republicans are fearing right now. And, and as far as that, that uh, political strategy by the Democrats, you're saying in their book it's better for uh, this administration to implode, they step back, rather than bring on impeachment proceedings where the public may then turn to them and say, well, you've caused the trouble. That's right. That's right. Don't interfere with the enemy while he's making mistakes. So my feeling here is within the next week or two, the Republicans will make a deal with the Democrats on health care. Uh, the Democrats will start moving into territory they didn't think they could gain. And the Republicans will have no armor. As in a compromise on the health care? Compromise, yes. Uh, Obama too. So I think the Democrats are trying to restore the Democratic Party. They know this will play out. And it may put out an impeachment, but they don't want to look like the fall guys here. They want the sword to be fallen on by the Republicans. So do you see that there may be a stronger motion from within the Republican Party publicly around no, the country? No. Um, impeachment is not removal. And let's keep that in mind. That the president could be impeached, that is, the high crimes and misdemeanors, just like Clinton was. But to remove him means the Senate would have to do it. A lingering, crippled president who's been impeached is great for the Democrats because they haven't got a replacement. They need another election. So crippling Mr. Trump is a Democratic strategy. And it's a strategy they can play out because he seems to be doing most of the damage himself. This morning's tweet is another situation that he's playing out. His lawyers must be going crazy uh, with him doing things like this because he has the sword and he's using it on himself. But Ed, we've been talking about Donald Trump and his administration being on the precipice for weeks now, perhaps ever since he, <laughs> he assumed the Oval Office. Yeah. What will the tipping point be? Uh, well, we passed the important tipping point, and that is his removal by his own administration, Article 25. I think the next tipping point will be that the president starts trying to do presidential work and finding that he can't. And I'm not sure what happens at that point. Does Pence step forward? Who steps forward? People are jumping ship now. The UN ambassador, she's already jumped ship. Uh, how how do you mean she's jumped ship? Well, she's saying Paris is a good thing. The Accords are a good thing. The UN is a great well, instrument. Well, the same as Rex Tillerson, the Secretary of State. Much like Rex Tillerson. So uh, the more of them that jump ship, the more unable he will be to run the country, and the more disarray there will be. I don't know where he says, I can't go on, I resign, but he's got to be getting very close to that spot. Well, it's interesting because you've also had um, uh, his pick for uh, taking on the FBI directorship, uh, Christopher 
Ray Ray. um, fronting the Senate and and his comments seem to put him at odds with the President as well. Yes, six times he said he would not defend the President's actions. Moreover, he said what Junior did might well be a crime and he's withholding judgment there. Uh, Junior is now baggage for the President. What he does, I don't know. Kushner is now baggage for the President. And his own daughter, sitting down in that chair, is probably the last hot seat she'll get for a while. I fear that this is really unraveling and some other people are going to come in to take control. There's going to be a confrontation here between the real Republicans who want to run the country and Mr. Trump who wants to run a company. Ed, we shall see what the next week brings. Indeed. <laughs> well, maybe it'll bring some health care. <laughs> <laughs> Professor us. Ed Blakely, always Thank great you. to talk to you. Thanks for Nice much. talking to you.